Do you want to learn how to add animations to your game character? If so, then stick around. Moving a character around the screen with a static image tends to be pretty boring like this. This character is just sliding across the screen without moving his feet. Today we're going to learn how to add these animations. Let's start by adding some ground. We'll add a square, stretch out the square, move it down, color it green. Next we'll add a player. Do this by adding another square and rename that square to player. And while we're at it, rename the other one to ground. On the square on the ground, add a collider. This will be a box collider 2D. And on the player, add a box collider 2D also. And on the player, add a rigid body 2D. Play the game and see what we get. Looks good so far. Open up the asset store. In the asset store, click 2D at the top. Under pricing, click free assets. Look for the asset called Simple 2D Platformer Assets Pack. Click that one. Choose to open it up in Unity. You should see the Package Manager appear. If you don't, go to Window and Package Manager. You should also see Simple 2D Platformer Assets Pack. You will need to download it the first time and then wait. I've already downloaded it, so I don't need to download it. Once the download is complete, click Import. Install any required dependencies also. You can choose which assets you want. By default, all of them are selected, but you want to make sure you get the ones underneath sprites for sure. Click Import. What that does is adds them to your project. Once it's complete, you see a folder under your assets down here. Browse underneath the simple 2D platformer. Go under Sprites. You'll notice that we have several sprites. To change the size of these previews, you can use this little slider down here. And we can look at Player. If you open this file up by itself, we'll see the individual sprite images. We'll open this file and we can see the individual sprite images. This is one single file that contains all of the sprites. And this is called a sprite sheet. And what a sprite sheet is, is a single file that has many individual images in it. And this makes it much more efficient to load one single file than individual files. The data is loaded only one time so that we don't have to open different files during each update. Internally, it keeps the file open and then just chooses a spot in the file where to read the image from. The little arrow here will expand and show you each individual image. Notice that we have two of them called idle, idle 0 and idle 1. We have jump 0, 1, and 2, and we have run 0, 1, 2, and 3. Sometimes there'll be a sprite sheet for idle by itself. Idle would be when the player's just standing there and you can see that he just kind of bounces up and down a little bit. When I select these right and left, we can see in the inspector that it just bobs his head up and down a little. We go over here to jump and what he does here is just extends his legs and then he can land. And then over here on run, he just moves his feet back and forth. So over in the inspector, you can see that when I switch between these images, it kind of looks like he's running. So we'll attach the idle image to the player. Click and drag an idle image, maybe this first one, and drag it into the sprite of the player. And now we see the sprite on top of the box. Run it and this is what we get. Select the player, mouse over the scene and press F and that will zoom in. What we're looking at here is a close up of the player. What we want to do is edit the box collider. So go to the box collider. You'll see this icon here with with some dots and lines, click it, and that lets you edit 
the collider box of this sprite. So you can see that the box is a perfect square, but our sprite is a little taller than he is wide. So we would want to reduce that a little bit. Otherwise, he might come up to a wall and not be able to quite touch the wall. Generally, you want to keep this a little bit less than the width of the sprite itself. So we'll reduce these a little bit. And just to demonstrate, we can push this bottom one below his feet. And when we would run it, it'll look like he's floating on the ground. And there you have it. Looks like he's floating on the ground. So we'll put that to a reasonable spot. Next, we'll make our player move. Add a script to the player. Call it player movement script. Open it up and edit it. We'll be moving the sprite by editing the rigid body. Create a rigid body variable. I'll just call it RB. In the start, go ahead and get that component and assign it. Make another variable called X direction and assign it to zero. That's going to be used to get our right and left movement. We'll get the default right and left movement by calling input dot either get access or input dot get access raw. Get access raw will be discrete and it will give us a negative one, zero, or one. Where get access will give us a continuous value. And those would be continuous numbers between negative one and positive one. A little hint, get access raw is usually better for 2D games and get access is generally better for 3D games. 2D games usually have very abrupt start and stops of character movement. And our parameter will be horizontal and make sure that you spell that string correctly. We'll head back to the top and make a couple constants. Our first one is our movement speed. I'm going to pick five. Our next one is jump force and I'm going to pick 10. And to demonstrate the movement behavior, I'm going to log the X direction to the screen. We go and run it and then I will hit the left and right arrow keys. And we can see we get zero, negative one or one. You can also use the A and D keys as well. If I change this to get access, when we run it again, we will get continuous values. And you can see in the log statements that I have continuous values between negative one and one. I'll put this back to get access raw and we will add some movement code and we simply make a new vector multiply the x direction by some value, and then we will just keep the y velocity as it is. And we can head back over and run it. And you can see that we have movement by our character, but of course we have no animations. Let's add jumping to the script. Here we make a call to input.getButtonDown and that'll work for keyboard users and joystick users as well. Just like getting the raw axis above for horizontal movement. And in this line, we keep the horizontal velocity the same. And then we just add a vertical velocity. And we try it out. We have right and left movement and we have jumping. We have infinite jumping as we can jump in the air, but we'll fix that later. We're going to end up adding three animations, one of them while our character's idle, one of them while he's jumping, and the other one while he's running. Let's start with the idle first. To organize this a little better, I'm going to move the sprites out of this sprite folder that's in the Simple 2D Platformer and move it into the root level of my assets. Typically, we want to organize these in folders, but since this is a very short demo, I'm going to leave everything in the assets folder root so it's visible for us. Right click somewhere in here 
and add a new animation. This makes a little icon with a triangle in it and we can change the name of this to player underscore idle. Note that the file extension is anim. When we view this file in the explorer, in the file explorer, we can see that we have a player idle.anim and player idle.metafile. We need to connect this animation into the player. So you can click and drag this and you want to wait until the arrow kind of makes a little curve to it. That'll make the connection for you just like this. Once we do that, several things happen. If there's no animator yet in the player as a component, it will add it for you. We can see it right here. And then we can also see it down here in the assets. This makes a file called player.controller. And then when we look at this in the file viewer, we can see it makes a dot controller file. All right. So take a look over to your player object in the hierarchy, then look at the inspector in the animator and make sure there is a controller in here. Sometimes it does not connect correctly. You can see mine says none right here. So we want to click and drag that controller file into there or you can just select it with the little dot right here. But this controller file has to be connected. So since mine is not connected, I will go ahead and connect it. Now it's connected okay. We'll need to view the animation window and the animator window. If they're not visible, go to window, click animation and show your animation window. Mine is showing right here. And then we'll need the animator window as well. If it is not showing, go to window animation and then animator. First thing to do is work on the player idle animation. We will click on this arrow to expand the images. And then you want to select two of these, hit shift and select two of them like this. And then you want to drag them into the animation window. And to start, you can just hit the play button and you can see this guy freaking out because the animation is too fast. We only have two images, right? So we need a pretty slow animation, which is the frames per second. So I'm gonna set mine to 10. If this window for samples is not showing, click these three dots right here and select show sample rate like this. And you should see that appear. Okay, he's still kind of bobbing fast in my opinion for just standing there. So we'll put that down to five. And there's what it will look like. And if you want to see the images being animated, you can expand this little triangle here and view each of the frames. We can run this and we see that he's not moving. He actually moved one time while he was falling down. It's going to be tough to see, but I'll run it again and you can see him bob up and down real quick. Okay. The reason for this is it is not looping. So you want to turn looping on. So click player idle in your assets and turn loop time on. And now, of course, he is always bobbing up and down regardless of what our movement is. Next, we want to add an animation for running. We can do this one of two ways. You can go to the animation window and pull down this menu and do create new clip or you can add it directly to the assets like we did. So in this case, I will use it using the menu and I will call this player running. And this makes another 
one of these .anim files. And notice up in the animation window, you can pull this down. When the player is selected, this menu will give us two options. If the player is not selected, we're simply not going to be able to access that. And when we select the player in the hierarchy, we can select between the two of those. So player running does not have any sprites in it yet. And of course, player idle does. So let's select player running. Go to your assets. Make sure that the asset sprite is expanded and select these four by holding down shift and clicking and drag these into the animator. We can test run it. And of course he's running too fast. So we can drop this down to maybe 20. So kind of fast, I'll put this to 15 maybe. Now we need to have some code to decide what animation to show based on our character movements. Right now, you can see that he's always bouncing up and down. Okay, And this brings us to the animator. So I will make this bigger so we can see it. And this is a state chart. And this shows us how we can transition between states of animation. Notice that when the game starts, the player is idle. And it chooses that just because it's the first one that we created. But we have this player running as well. So there'll be a few things that we need to do here. One, we want to make a parameter that tells us what our state is. Now we could make a Boolean that says, are we running or not? However, that's gonna make our logic a little ugly when we want to add let's say jumping or flying or fighting or punching anything else. So I generally don't like to use Booleans unless I know it's truly gonna be a Boolean state. We're going to add a parameter. You wanna to go to the top left here, click the plus sign, and we're going to use an integer for this. And we will call this player state. And what we want to do is draw the valid transitions between states. So if we are standing there, we are allowed to start running. If we're running, we're allowed to stop and just stand there. So what we want to do is select a box here, right click it and click make transition and then select the destination that you want to transition to. I'm going to go to player running because that's valid. So right now I can go and start my game, I go to player idle, eventually I'll be able to run, but we don't ever have a way to get back to just standing still. So we also need to make that transition from running to idle. So click the running box, right click, click transition, make transition, click on the box there. You can move these around to whatever makes sense, right? So this is fine for now. And I'm going to shrink this window back down by double clicking on this top bar right there. And if you can't see your transitions here, they're probably just uh, off the screen. You can uh, hit the F key. That'll bring them right back in Okay, while this mouse is somewhere in this window. So we'll work with just running and idle right now. Okay, we can run the game and we can manually click these little arrows right here if we want to, and we can see that we have kind of a smooth transition between running and idle. Again, this is probably best suited for 3D. We want more abrupt stops. Secondly, we can see that our animations have this exit time turned on. So both of these transitions have that exit time turned on. We wanna make some edits to our transitions here. Go ahead and click the first arrow that's going from idle to player running. This one right here. 
make sure that has exit time is off and expand these settings. So rather than having a smooth blended transition between these two, we want to make it so that it has a very abrupt transition. Turn fix duration off and put a zero in there for duration percent. And then do the same thing for the other arrow going from player running to idle exit time should be off fixed duration should be off and put this to zero now we need a way to transition between these two states and add some logic in here what we're going to do we're going to just think of player idle as state zero we're going to think of player running as state one so what we can do is add some logic that gets us between these states by observing the value of this variable here, this parameter called player state. So what we will do, we will click the arrow going from idle to running. And you'll notice on the right, we can have some conditions here. And currently we don't have any conditions. So we want to add one by clicking the plus sign. And we only have one parameter to choose. We could have many to control these animations. We just have one called player state. And then we want to see if it's exactly zero or one. Over here, we can select greater than, less than, equal to, not equal to. But whenever the state is equal to one, we want to make this transition. So it says that this transition will happen when player state is equal to one. And then going backwards, we can click the arrow going from running to idle and add a condition there. Again, we only have player state. We want to say when it's exactly equal to zero, we will transition back. And what we can do is we can run this game. I'm going to stay out of full screen mode. So I have my animator window here. When I manually set this value to zero, he's idle. And when I manually set it to one, he starts running. Of course, I can still play this game, jump, whatever. But right now I only have the ability to manually change these values. So this is zero, he bounces, and this is one, he runs. We need to programmatically change this player state in our player controller. So in our player script, we're going to need a hook to this animator right here. So we'll head back over to our player movement script and write the code for this. And this is an animator object. We'll make a variable called animator. And in our start, we will go ahead and get a hook to it. So in start, we'll say animator equals get component and then cast it to an animator. Now it's not a great idea to have hard-coded values for our states such as 0, 1, and 2. We want to make more meaningful variables for that, so we'll make an enumeration. So we'll make a private enum, we'll call it animation state enum. We're going to put idle 0, running 1, jumping 2. By default it will start these at 0, but it's always safe to manually assign them numbers. So we don't have a jumping state yet, but we know that we will soon. And how do we get a hook to that animation parameter that's up here called player state? We do that by getting the animator and sending in a value. So how about we will go ahead and assign it manually just to demonstrate this to be running and it's a little bit loosely typed here as we have to pass in the name of the parameter as a string so of course you could end up messing that up so you might want to make a string constant for that as well now it's expecting zero one or two and what we want to do of course is send this enumeration in and we'll just manually set it to running. And of course that's a tight mismatch because it's expecting an integer and it will not auto cast. So we need to manually cast it like that. Now when we play our game, we should see it start running. And of course that works okay. Additionally, we see the player state is set to one. Of course I could change it manually, but right now in our start, we are setting this to a one right away. So now that we know how to set that, let's set this animation state based on our current movement. 
instead of having user input code in here and trying to calculate what the animation state will be, let's go ahead and separate that out and make it nice and neat. We'll make a helper function called set animation state and it won't return anything or take in any parameters. And this X direction variable right here is global, so we can determine in here if we are moving right or left. So we can easily determine if we're not moving by checking this X direction variable. We'll make a local variable in here. We'll call it player animation state. And if we're not moving, we'll set this equal to be idle just like that. And if we're not idle right now, we'll make the assumption that we are running. Eventually we'll have some logic in here to determine if we're jumping, but we'll add that later. And what we would want to do is set the animation state just like we did here. So we'll get rid of this in the start. That was just for testing. And our plan is to figure out what state we're in in this chunk of code. And then just once at the end, we'll go ahead and set our animation state. So all we'll do is pass player animation state in there and cast that to be an integer. And then finally, at the end of update, after we figure out what the movement keys are and the velocity, we'll just make a call to set animation state. And that will read our variables and determine what the animation should look like. And here we go. You can see when we're not moving, he just bobs up and down. But when we move right and left, we go into the running state there. Of course, our problem is now that while we jump, we can be idle and run. And it looks kind of funny. That may or may not be what you want. What we're going to do is put a simple jumping animation on. So to do that, we would have to have another state in here, which would be our jumping state. So we can go to our assets and add another animation, or we can just simply come to the player in our hierarchy, add a new state here, and we'll do it that way, and we will call it player underscore jumping. And you can see we have no images in here, but in our other ones, we do. So what we need to do is add the jumping images. Now we can see jumping has three images and it looks very similar to the way the idle image works. So what I'm gonna do is simply have a one frame animation with the guy's legs extended like that. Now you can see that this player jumping was added to the state chart. My and we are gonna do this player jumping so we will make a state going between player idle and jumping and player running and jumping because when we're standing there, we can transition to jumping and when we're running, we can transition to jumping. So we will make a transition like we did before from idle to jumping and then we'll make one from jumping to idle because we can land and not move. Do the same thing for jumping to running and from running to jumping. And we have a little bit of busy work to do. We have to make the conditions for all of these transitions. And we also have to set the transition type as well. So we'll just start with idle to jumping, take exit time off. Transition duration to zero, jumping to idle, do the same thing, take off exit time, set the transition to zero, and repeat that for jumping and running as well, just like this. And there we have the last one done. And we will consider jumping to be state number two, right, from our enumeration chart here. So we'll add a behavior. So when we go from zero to two, that will be a jump. So we will add that condition 
Make sure idle to jumping arrow is selected. Add a condition. Make it exactly equal to two. Jumping to idle, select that arrow. Make it exactly equal to zero. And then repeat that for running and jumping. So from running to jumping, select that arrow, add a condition, make it exactly equal to two. And from jumping to running, select the arrow, add a condition, make it exactly equal to one. If your animations are not working correctly when you test it out, the first place to go back is to look at these. Sometimes you accidentally had greater than, sometimes you pick the wrong number. And right now, ours all look good. I just double checked them. Now we have to determine if we are jumping. There are several ways we can do this. We can have a grounded variable to see when we collide with the ground, or we can simply look at the Y direction. So since we want to disallow jumping in the air, we can just make an is grounded variable just like this and I'll set it equal to false since we are starting out in the air and what we'll do we'll check for collisions with the ground so to do this we're gonna have to have a tag in our ground first of all so we'll go ahead and do that now so we'll select our ground we'll add a tag and I will call this tag grounded and I will use a capital G because most of these will have capitals anyway and I just follow that naming convention. So we have the tag in there and make sure you select it, right? So adding the tag is one thing, but selecting the tag is something else. So we will do on collision enter 2D and we'll add code to check to make sure that we actually intersect the ground and we'll set our variable to be true when we collide with the ground. We'll make an on collision exit 2D and we will check to see if we leave the ground and we'll set is grounded to false. And in our update function we will make sure that we are grounded before allowing us to execute an actual jump right here. So we'll try that part just to make sure we cannot continue to jump in the air. And we can't do it anywhere. And I have a mistake in my tag here. I called it grounded. So I'd either need to change it in here or change the name of the tag. And you can see we can jump, but when I hit the jump button multiple times in the air, it doesn't let us keep jumping. So that logic works fine. Now all we have to do is add the animation. So we'll go into our animation state and we'll just use that is grounded. So anytime we're in the air, we're going to be in the jump state whether we're moving straight up and down or diagonally, whatever. And anytime we're on the ground, we're going to be either running or idle. So we'll check is grounded like this. And our options when we are on the ground are those two. So when we're on the ground, we can either run or we can be idle. If we're not on the ground, we must be jumping. So we'll set that state accordingly, just like that. And now we try this, so we can run right and left, or idle, and you can see the way his legs extend when we're jumping. So whether we're moving in the air sideways or not, that's what we chose to do. And it works just fine.